Hello everyone and welcome to our Resetting Retirement webinar. My name is Stephen Earp and I'm the Chief Brand Officer at Viridian and your host today. The world has changed so much over the last 10 weeks, hasn't it? Who would have thought we'd ever see such chaotic times? And for, and for those of you contemplating retirement, I can only guess how you might be feeling. To help me explore those feelings with you and put forward lots of ideas, let me introduce my colleagues for today. Firstly, Mike Thompson, our Executive Advisor based in Perth. Mike, Mike will be focusing on all things cash flow related. Mike has been looking after retirees for over 20 years. How are you going, Mike? Very good, thanks, Steve. Thanks for having me and uh, welcome to all our guests. Yeah, pleasure, Mike. David Ross, our Executive Advisor based in Wollongong. David will be focusing on the investment front. David has 15 years experience. Welcome, David. Good afternoon, Stephen, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for making the time to, to witness our webinar today. Agree entirely, David. And Natalie, Chitos Natalie Jan Chitovsky, CEO of Full Time Lives. Natalie is a social impact entrepreneur inspired by conversations with her baby boomer parents on how to make a smooth transition from their full-time paid work, Natalie co-founded Full-Time Lives. She's been applying a human-centered design approach to understand how to help pre-retirees and retirees lead meaningful, healthy and connected lives. Hi Natalie, how are you going? Hi Stephen, thanks for having me today. Uh, pleasure. The coronavirus has affected us in so many ways. In just a couple of months, we've gone from being free to being isolated in our homes. There are many things that have happened that may have affected your retirement plans. While it may be daunting and you may feel anxious or disappointed, there's no need to panic. In this webinar, we'll look at how your retirement plans may have changed and why, and then give you some tips and tools on what you can do now to help you reset your retirement plan. But before that, just a few housekeeping items. At any time you can ask questions, just click on the Q&A tab at the bottom of the screen and type in your question. As time allows, the presenters will address as many questions as they can and we'll find, our, and if we find ourselves short of time, we'll come back uh, separately. The chat function has, has been disabled and will not be monitored. So please only use Q&A to submit your questions. We'll also be recording this webinar and we'll share the link after the event. Please share the link with friends and family who you may feel will benefit from the content. And as always, please do not hesitate to reach out to your advisor or any of the team at Viridian. We're here to help. So let's get cracking. Have your plans changed? How have they changed? Because we've been required to social isolate, many businesses and economies have been affected. This has had a flow on effect for many people, which means your personal income, cash flow investments may have been impacted. As a result, you may have less superannuation than you did a couple of months ago be unable to save or invest as much as before. Or it may mean you can't retire when you want to. And there are many reasons for that. And I just wanted to share something with you that I was with a friend over the weekend, a teacher who has been thinking of retirement. And he said, I can't believe that my super has dropped. He said, yeah, and I wanted to, in, to save some more, but couldn't. And the one thing that I did say to him, I said, well, what do you think now? And he said, well, I just feel like I can't because I, I feel that things have changed and are, and, and, are, and are a bit uneasy at the moment. He did ask me this question. He said, well, what actually happened? Next slide, please. So I went through this with him. It's pretty amazing that in March, the ASX dropped over 20%. This was the largest drop that we've seen since the GFC in 2008. 
similar drops we've seen in the financial work right across the world. While the market has recovered a little in the last six weeks, and back in the last week, I think it's recovered quite a bit more. We still expect to see volatility for the remainder of the year as the world grapples with the coronavirus. And it's that volatility that I discussed with my friend quite a bit. Your investment strategy shouldn't change because of the volatility. And the point that I made to my friend was that you have to have a plan. And I asked him what his plan was, and of course he chuckled, and I got the message that maybe he didn't. If you're one of the one million Australians who've lost their job or had their hours reduced as a result of the COVID-19, then your income and cash flow may have been affected. This potentially has consequences for you both now and in the future. Even if you're receiving JobKeeper payments, you may be earning less now, which means you won't have any employer super payments being made as they're based on your income. You also may have less money to put it away into your super. But it may also affect your cash flow for a much longer period of time, even after you've returned to work. Or if you've deferred bills or loan payments, as my friend had explained that he had, as these will all need to be repaid in the future. And you may actually be paying off your loans for longer. If you've accept, ex accessed your super early, you'll also have less superannuation that won't necessarily be replenished. Now, the property market has also been particularly affected by COVID-19. It's been harder to buy and sell properties due to social distancing laws. With more people out of work, demand for property has also gone down. If you're a landlord, you may have been required to offer your tenant relief. It's expected that house prices may fall up to 10% over the next six months. Some clients have asked us if they should consider buying or selling property now. Of course, that depends on their circumstances, but you may want to consider what the advantages and disadvantages of this are to you and then make a decision. Perhaps you may sell for less now, but could also purchase for less. Let's look at what we can do now. The first and most important thing you can do is review your goals and objectives. That means looking at much more than just your financial situation because retirement income, because retirement isn't all about, about, about money at all. It's about, how you, it's about what you want and what makes you tick. What are your hopes and aspirations for retirement? What and who is important to you? And what kind of legacy you may want to leave? Understanding these things should lead to you making sound financial decisions for your future. I'd like now to pass on to Natalie, who helps people review and prioritise their goals and objectives as they transition to retirement. And this is from a lifestyle perspective. Go to it, Natalie. Thanks, Stephen. So I'm going to share with you three tips that were um, that was in the guide and also in the follow-up worksheets that you'll get after this webinar. Look, my three tips are firstly, um, use this time that you've got as we re-emerge from ISO to plan your next chapter. Like review what are the priorities for you in the next chapter of um, life after COVID. So some of the things that you might want to take into account would be your own wellness as well as the health of others around you. And um, also obviously the financial aspect along with what does your day to day look like? I think we've all had time to really explore how we want to be useful with our time. How do we want to contribute? How do we want to engage with other people and strip out some of the stuff that might have kept us really busy but wasn't necessarily meaningful? So we've got this opportunity as we slowly emerge from our lockdown to really be quite intentional about how we use our time. And that means maybe not revisiting things that kept you really busy and frantic and caused a lot of stress but gravitate more towards the things that you felt like you never had time to do before, but have had time to do, whether it's connecting with friends and family, learning new things, um, I guess going deeper with some of the projects that you may not have had much time for pre-COVID, 
um, there's just so many things that I've, I guess people have been um, playing around with and exploring that it's really good to try and in, be intentional in keeping those good habits. Next slide. And so the second tip is planning for a multi-stage life. So now that we're living longer, healthier lives, from my exploration of the blue zones around the world where people lead happy, healthy lives, the places that I visited, such as Okinawa and Loma Linda in California, where the life expectancy is a lot higher than the rest of the nation in those countries, what I've found is that people take breaks, not just at the end of their careers for retirement, but actually they chunk it down so that they reset and reskill and really deeply reconsider what they're gonna do next, whether it's paid work, a new career, or a mixture of paid work as well as volunteer work, anything that gives you that sense of purpose, as I mentioned before. So it is looking at your life and chunking it down to multiple stages of not just careers, but also um, different, like taking sabbaticals is becoming more and more normal for people who are in their mid-career, um, not just towards the end of their career. And taking a gap year is also something that's not just for people coming straight out of uni. More and more people are doing that. And I guess um, as we're coming out of lockdown, um, it's in many ways where we've had a bit of a gap, a pause, um, and maybe some people are already exploring what um, sort of new areas they'd like to reskill in in order to shape their next steps when it comes to their career and projects. Um, and the last tip that I have to share with you is to be playful and experiment. Um, we can, you know, put our plans into, you know, have really grand plans, but I think the key is also to just try things. Like um, sometimes we dream that things are gonna be a certain way, but it's not until we get there we realized that it's not exactly how we thought it would be. I often hear of people downsizing, selling their large property in a big city and then um, doing the sea change or tree change. In fact, Bernard Salt mentioned this in The Australian a couple of weeks ago. And um, when I read that, I thought, oh, it's all well and good to be talking about it, uh, something to consider. But I hear so many stories of people who come to my workshops and share their experiences where they might have downsized and moved to places that they had spent holidays but hadn't necessarily invested in building out networks and connections in those new communities they've moved to. And um, it may not have been exactly how they thought from a day-to-day -day lifestyle perspective. So I think it's really important to try out different things and experiment and run really short experiments to just see if um, the lifestyle that you dream of, or even if you are thinking of taking, um, making a, a a career change um, of maybe doing some skilled volunteering just to get a sense of what that new industry might be like or what that new organization could be like because um, it's not always how it's cracked out to be. So those are my three tips. So, you know, exploring what gives you a sense of purpose and planning for a multi-stage life and then being playful and experimenting with all these different ideas that you might have around your next chapter of your life. So I'll hand it back to Stephen. Thank you, Natalie. That was fantastic. Some really good tips there. I really liked the uh, notion of experimenting. I think that that's terrific. And uh, I think it's, I've always been inter interested in in how people feel about things. And I think until you've experimented and had a little crack at it, I don't think that you can actually work out whether it's suitable for you. So I think those tips were fantastic. Thank you very much. I'd like Nat to now introduce Mike Thompson, who talk about reviewing incoming expenses. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Stephen. Um, now I'm going to run through the points that are on the screen and the topic of reviewing your income and expenses. Um, this has never been more important. And one of the important things I've found in discussing this with people is that the, the better handle you have on uh, your income and particularly, and more importantly, expenses, 
I think the better peace of mind that it gives you and your family to know that you're in control of these things. Um, the first point there, has your income reduced? Um, absolutely for a lot of people. Um, I think uh, we've done a wonderful job in Australia um, helping to protect people. And hopefully if you're eligible, you've already been in receipt of uh, perhaps JobKeeper or a job seeker um, just to help you through this time. Um, but outside of that, absolutely, people's income has reduced and there's a lot of people that have been affected by the drop in their income and their cash flow. Um, what it does, I think, make us reflect on is looking at your income over the longer term as well and just reviewing to see what actual free cash flow you have. Um, it's something that a lot of people don't look at, but what I mean by this is that you've got your income coming in each fortnight or each month and it's completely 100% committed. It just doesn't allow for when things happen in life, um, doesn't allow for the unplanned expenses that come up. So as we come out of this, I think it's a great opportunity for people to have a better handle on their income, but more importantly, their expenses to work out how much flexibility they've got with that um, cash flow and that uh, income. Uh, the next two points, uh, what expenses do you have this year and have any of your expenses been deferred or increased? Um, talking to a lot of my clients, um, they've had holidays cancelled, um, they've put off uh, upgrading the car or uh, the caravan. Um, I think here, this is important to sit down uh, with your family and partners and just to have a look at those expenses, um, to look at the if they can be deferred um, or have your expenses gone up. But the large capital items that people may have been putting in place, it's, it's important to have a good understanding yourself. You know, has the holiday cost just been deferred until next year or will it not occur at all? And, you know, talking to some people, um, some of those capital items of money that they'd already put aside or saved up um, will no longer be required. Um, so it's important that you sit down and make a decision, I think, about that capital cash that's been put aside to make sure you're um, putting it to good use. Um, it may have already come out of an investment or out of your uh, uh, retirement nest egg, um, so it may be able to go back into that investment. Um, so there's those considerations to give there. Um, the next topic, how does this impact your cash flow? For those that are lucky to have reduced expenses and may be on cash flow coming from a retirement income stream or an allocated pension, you've probably received correspondence uh, over the last month or so in regard to the ability to reduce your um, allocated pension payment. And that's in regard to the correspondence regarding minimum and maximum amounts um, that are set on income streams. The government, of course, is allowing people to reduce these um, um, by half. Um, the important thing, I think, there with that correspondence, if you received it, is to be talking to your advisor. Um, this is important because um, if you're not needing the cash flow, absolutely reduce those payments that are coming to you. But I think talking to your advisor, you need to have a look at and understand where the payments were coming out of your income stream. Uh, whether you were drawing down on growth assets or whether it was money that was already put aside from uh, cash and fixed interest, which is in a lot of cases how people have their allocated pensions set up. So talk to your advisor, have a talk about the impact on your investment, but also it may also impact on your cash flow if you choose to have the reduced minimum happen on your allocated pension. Um, the last point there, um, how does this impact your investments in super? And that was what I was just touching on. Um, if you're not drawing as much out of your allocated pension or your investment, that can help to preserve some of the balance. Um, but also take into consideration um, the earlier point about your income being reduced. If you currently have um, some salary sacrifice happening to your super as you uh, work towards building for retirement, um, you may have to drop some of that back um, in the short term uh, just to protect some cash flow. Once again, these are very important decisions that not only have an impact for you in the short term from a cash flow, but may have an impact for you on the longer term value of your super and the longer term value of your investment, which may affect your goals. So importantly, touch base with your advisor to find out how that it will affect you. Um, thanks, Stephen, back to you. I think that that's a very good point, Mike, um, to be, really mindful of cash flow and, 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 and talk through that 
Um, I know that you're also very um, up to date with what's going on with Centrelink and opportunities that there may be there for uh, clients. Would you like to go through that for us, please? Absolutely. Um, and this is a topic for those that know me that um, I'm very passionate about and uh, an area I do a lot of work in. Um, the reviewing people's Centrelink entitlements, entitlements is really important. Um, there's a lot of benefits um, that people can get access to with Centrelink that I find that people are just not aware of. Um, they may be getting some benefit from Centrelink, but they could be getting a lot more. Um, the first point on here is the government stimulus payment they made of $750. They've already made one payment and that was per person. Um, so for a couple, they received $1,500. Um, but importantly, there's another payment coming up in July of $750 per person. Um, to receive that payment, uh, you need to be in receipt of um, the, the right type of payment from Centrelink or have the right type of uh, benefit card uh, as at the 10th of July. Um, now, there is a, uh, an extensive list of people that qualify for that. Um, the information is available uh, on Centrelink or MyGov um, sites to find out. But as an example, um, you know, people have been currently in receipt of age pension, disability support pension, carer payments, uh, even youth allowance, um, and Commonwealth Seniors healthcare cards, uh, low income healthcare cards. Uh, all of those people should be receiving that payment and uh, hopefully you already received that one that already gone past. Um, the next point I wanted to touch on was just in regard to those Commonwealth Seniors healthcare cards, because I know we've had a couple of questions come in, come in um, and also to tie in with that is the low income healthcare card. Um, they're both a concession card. Uh, the Commonwealth Seniors Healthcare Card is for those people that are of age pension age um, that don't qualify for the age pension because of the income test or the asset test. Um, and then you can obviously apply for the Commonwealth Seniors Healthcare Card to get some of the benefits that are available from Centrelink. Um, some of those benefits include um, uh, cheaper rates uh, through um, your local shires, uh, pharmaceutical benefits, uh, of course, that 750 payment coming up in July. Um, the Commonwealth Seniors Healthcare Card is not subject to uh, an assets test. It's an uh, income test um, that uh, you have to satisfy to be able to qualify for that card. The low income healthcare card I find typically is for people that are needing some assistance that are under age pension age. Uh, once again, there is a um, income test that applies to that. Now, when I talk about income tests, um, it's not one size fit all. The income test for an age pension is slightly different to the income test that applies to a Commonwealth Seniors Healthcare Card and different again for the low income healthcare card. There are also different thresholds. Um, if you're needing assistance with any of this, um, as far as type of card, um, the, how the tests are applied, uh, once again, important to just touch base with your advisor and they can assist you with these things. Um, the next point I wanted to touch on was gifting. Um, gifting is something that I find people aren't really aware of uh, from the point of view that they could be assisting family members at the moment. Um, the gifting from a Centrelink point of view comes under the gifting rules, whereby you are allowed to gift up to $10,000 per household, not per person, but per household, per financial year, um, with a maximum of 30,000 over a five year period. Now that's an important um, thing to understand because you can't just be doing $10,000 uh, each year. Um, and of course, coming up to this time of the year being the 30th of June, it is possible to be doing that before 30th of June and then again in July. Um, the difference that can have for some people that are currently receiving an age pension is substantial. With the age pension, if you currently have a reduced pension due to the assets test, um, you could be getting an increase in your um, uh, pension uh, entitlement from Centrelink. But once again, have a talk to your advisor before you take any action in that area. Um, the other thing, and hopefully everybody's uh, got used to using the MyGov site for Centrelink. If you're not using it at the moment, I suggest um, you seek out a family member. Uh, the younger generation are very good on computers, but get yourself familiar with MyGov and um, registered and set up for MyGov to access Centrelink benefits. Because what I'm finding is that if you get in onto the um, MyGov, you can have a look at the income 
and the assets that are recorded for you, for you under your name, uh, importantly, those assets, um, review them. Go in there and have a look. Have a look, see how much you recorded, um, the value of the caravan, the car, your bank account balances, your income stream. Um, you can then update them. Um, and uh, as, as we know, under the assets test, the, you know, it's a $3 per thousand that you currently uh, have your age pension reduced by. So obviously a $10,000 change in assets could result in a $30 per fortnight change in uh, payment that you may receive. Um, I think they're the, they're the main points I wanted to cover off um, at this stage. So I'll hand back to you, Stephen. Thank you so much, Mike. That's fantastic. Um, I was speaking to a, a client of mine the other day who was just so surprised. He's been retired for some time and he accesses his super uh, via a pension, but he was so surprised what he could get for himself being the senior healthcare card, but also some tips that he could get give to his his children who have been um, affected by what's been going on. Um, so I think it's really good to hear about all of that to do with Centrelink. So thank you, Mike. Um, I'd like to now hand over to David Ross, who will talk who who will talk to us about reviewing our investments. Thanks, David. Thank you, Stephen, and thank you for highlighting earlier in the presentation what COVID nineteen has already done to investment markets. Uh, around the world. Now, this is not only limited to the Australian stock market. These changes to investments or valuations has impacted your own property, investment properties, superannuation and, and pension funds moving forward. Now, at all times when a market goes down, and these are not isolated events, um, happens every 10 to 12 years, people are always asking, when is the opportune time to review their portfolio? I always say annually. You should be considering how your money is invested at least every year with your advisor if you have one, and I recommend you have one, because even in times of good, your portfolio should be reviewed, not just in times of bad. Now, at the moment, you're probably feeling very apprehensive about how much investment risk is within your portfolio, and this has impacted how much your returns or what your returns are. And then people ask, how quickly can you change the assets? that you're already invested in. Now, for some platforms like superannuation, this is pretty quick. This can happen relatively quickly. Or if you're in an investment property and you wanna change some really deep down thought and consideration needs to be done because this is a, a, it will take a period of time to do. So with that, you, you should always look to review your investments annually. At the moment, I'm getting also asked, should we change our investment outlook because of COVID-19? I believe your investment outlook should be based on your goals and objectives, whether that be how much income you draw from your pensions or saving up for retirement, not just because of this event. And that leads me into, so what type of structures do you have for your money? Now, different type of structures may include superannuation, holding them personally, trusts, companies, self-managed funds, um, self-managed superannuation funds, sorry. All of these have different advantages and disadvantages when you take into account your planning in relation to tax, Centrelink and personal cash flow moving forward as well. They could have some estate planning issues or benefits. And again, should be reviewed annually to make sure that what you have set in place matches what you need at that time and not so much based on what is the investment market doing. So when it comes to reviewing the type of structures that you have your funds invested in, you may not need just the assistance of a financial advisor. You may need a solicitor. You may need a taxation professional as well to get the best or desired outcome for yourselves personally. Now saying all of this means that you need to review and I cannot emphasize enough to my clients when we're doing reviews at the moment, there was a reason why we review every year to set ourselves up for these, for these times. And we are changing structures accordingly if suited. Now on our next slide, we talk about retirement timelines. The one thing I ask clients when planning for retirement is not so much when do you want to stop work, I, I rather talk about when would you like to have the choice to retire? 
because a lot of people are transitioning to into retirement very different, differently now. They are looking to reduce hours. They are looking to change roles, maybe have that gap year as discussed earlier, or they're looking to volunteer. All these different considerations need to be planned out prior, during and after retirement and not basing your retirement timeline on, a, on an age or an amount of money to aspire to. It's more of a lifestyle decision. Now, at the moment, people looking to retire, as Stephen discussed earlier, they may think their retirement strategy is gone. It may not be. It's always that age old question is, well, how much is enough to retire on? And again, this is something that needs to be discussed with the financial advisor, if you already have one, at, at the review. So with, with that in mind, really for retirement and retirement planning, What's the optimal strategy for the next five to 10 years? It's based on your personal circumstance. So yeah, so please go and discuss what you need to discuss with a financial advisor like one of ours and we'll move forward. Thank you. There's a question here that uh, has just come in that you might like to, to, to have a crack at. Yes. How does the share market compare now to the pre COVID-19 period? Uh, limited to the share market, it's down about 15 to 20 percent, and that's just the, the Australian stock market, Stephen. However, most people's portfolio is not just limited to risky assets. So within that, you have assets like bonds and cash that are much less risk than what you have now, and they've performed not too badly uh, as well. So again, that comes into your long-term objective conversation of what you need in retirement or planning for. Mm. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. And, and another question too, um, why does the market continue to rise when every single index or indices such as unemployment, debt are so high? Share markets are forward looking. So they're valuing the economy in, in the future, not as now. So when, when you look at why the share market dropped, there were so many unknowns out there that people sell or markets drop on the unknown. There's a few knowns now which bring stability or reduces the volatility in the market. And because they're forward looking, they're, they're anticipating that the market or the economy on the ground shouldn't go any further south at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, it has been a bit easier to, to value investments, hasn't it? Um, now that there's more certainty. Oh, absolutely. The, the fundamentals of valuing assets is coming back into play, not as quickly as first thought, um, but it's definitely coming back. Um, if you look at short term history, Stephen, we had a, down, a, a mini downturn at the end of 2018 that no one seems to remember as yeah. well. So these, these events occur and with the right strategy in place, you, you go through them. Yeah. Well, thank you, David. Really appreciate that. And thank you to, to Mike and Natalie again as well. Well, what's clear from what Mike, David and Nat have talked about is that there isn't a one size fits all approach when it comes to retirement. It starts with your goals and your aspirations. And from there you can make a plan or changes so that you can achieve your goals. There are also many options available to you to reset your retirement depending on your personal circumstances. Some of the things that you can do right now include speak to your advisor. We have over a hundred advisors located across Australia. You could email us at let's talk at meridianadvisory.com.au. Now make sure you can access, the second thing is to make sure you access your Centrelink benefits to take advantage of it, of the July payment if eligible. And also we'll send you some resources to help you review your priorities, income and expenses. And speak to full-time lives to help you plan your transition to retirement. We would like to actually take some, answer some more questions now. If anybody's got questions that they'd like to ask and haven't yet, please use the Q&A at the bottom. 
Um, there's a question from Mike. Um, Mike, Centrelink declined the $750 payment for someone um, who has low income concession card. How, why would that be? Yeah, just looking through the um, list that I have on here, it's a very extensive list as far as I can see from Centrelink um, as far as who gets the 750 payment. Um, I found with some of my clients that have the um, uh, Commonwealth Seniors Healthcare card, we have actually applied for the low income healthcare card at the same time and have been successful in having both cards. Um, those people have received the payment, um, but that was probably because of the Commonwealth Seniors Healthcare card. The low income healthcare card doesn't appear to be on the list. Um, the important thing there, I think, is just to seek some advice or get um, a, a, some further help on that, that if somebody is qualifying for a low income healthcare card, to see whether they may be qualifying for some other benefit um, that may be on the list. Um, so they may be just missing out on something else, um, whether it be some other income support payment or um, uh, carer allowance, carer um, disability pension or, or something like that. There may be something else they can qualify for that may get them access to that um, payment, but a low income healthcare card in isolations on its own doesn't appear to be on the list. That's correct. Thanks, Mike. Um, and actually I've got another one here for you. Do you foresee yep. any regulatory changes? Um, absolutely, and something I get asked quite a bit. Um, you know, it'd be lovely just to set things uh, in concrete forever um, without any changes. Um, the thing I do find uh, dealing with Centrelink and dealing with superannuation, um, that there are often changes. Um, hopefully, most of these changes are for the better. Um, but um, yeah, just even with Centrelink, when it comes to the assets test, um, you know, there's indexation that happens all the time that uh, the actual thresholds that you're allowed to have for the amount of assets you can have uh, gets indexed up on the 1st of July each year. So it's about to happen. And then in March and September, the actual age pension amount increases, which pushes out your top asset test threshold. Um, so there will always be changes. But, you know, as we hear in the media that the government is uh, currently reviewing uh, and doing some papers up on uh, future retirement income. Uh, needs of Australians, um, and there will be some changes that will come out from that. So there will always be changes. Thanks, Mike. Um, David, here's one for you, I think. Um, what's an optimal investment strategy for someone five to 10 years from retirement? That is a great question, um, and quite a difficult one to give you a specific answer on, to be honest, because of how broad each person's retirement plan is. The best answer is to have a plan in place. Understand how your funds are invested for retirement, leading up to and after the time you decide to retire, but making sure that you understand the amount of risk in your portfolio and that you are comfortable with that level of risk. So when events like this occur, you're not too stressed out, I guess, is the best way to answer that one, Stephen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, stress comes into it, doesn't it, David? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's one of the biggest things for retirees pre and post retirement is, is paramount. And you know what? I've also found that making sure that our, our viewers there, when they sit with the advisor, explain how they feel about things, not just what their circumstance are, but how they feel about it so that you can adequately advise, give recommendations, but also take the stress away for them. Well, that's exactly right. And it also comes back to understanding the, the client's lifestyle, what's important yeah. to them. Um, none of my clients are concerned with a percentage-based return. They're more concerned about how long will my income last and will I be able to help out my children, grandchildren and so forth. So yeah. it's easy to say, oh, you got a 5% return last year, but what does that actually mean to you? Mm. And that's a very difficult question to answer. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, here's a, another one on the, the, the Commonwealth Healthcare card, Mike. Um, is the income of both the applicant and partner taken into account when applying for the Commonwealth Health card? And also, if the partner has since gone on job, JobKeeper, what would be the consideration? Okay, yes, once again, um, a good question there. 
the, the income test that is applied is for household. Um, so there is a threshold for um, single uh, people and there is a threshold for uh, couples. Um, even if it's only one person who is of age, pension age, given that we're talking the Commonwealth Seniors Healthcare card here. Um, the thing to understand with the income test there, they actually take adjusted taxable income um, um, plus the deemed income uh, from your uh, superannuation and your allocated pensions. So there is a formula they use. Now, off the top of my head, I do believe they would be looking at other um, government payments, but that may be one that we'll need to get out with the uh, information we send afterwards. I wouldn't like to say uh, one way or another as far as a, a JobKeeper payment coming in. Um, um, I, I, my gut feeling is it probably would come into assessable house wallet income, but I'd have to get that checked for you. Okay. Right, thank you, Mike. And it's coming in thick and fast here, Mike. Um, where is the best place to find out what benefits are available from Centrelink? I am on a low income health card, but also think I am probably under the threshold to obtain a pension now. Starting point, I think, would be uh, my gov. I know when I've assisted clients going in to apply for, um, say, the age pension, when they reach age pension age, once you go into there, you can uh, go through the process of actually uh, applying for a benefit. And when you go to apply for that benefit, they'll actually go through a few checkpoints first, obviously for age pension to check that you're of age pension age, you're Australian resident, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I think going through that process, when you click on that function in MyGov, it actually will show um, some of the different types of things that you may be looking to apply for. Um, if you're looking at, um, uh, a pension, of course, age pension. The big one there is the age pension age, to be aware of what age you can uh, get the age pension at. And also the Commonwealth Seniors Healthcare card is actually on uh, based on age pension age. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Natalie, I've got one for you. Um, it's to do with, I, I noticed in your bio, you talked about that the idea for your business came from discussions with your parents. Can you um, share with us some of the emotions they went through, some of the things that you, you actually learned from that, and maybe some of the emotions and, um, that you see with clients? You know, what are some of the things they're feeling? So um, I guess it came from lots of family discussions around um, what was going to happen to my dad when he retired. Um, so my dad's a specialist, he's a doctor, and his whole life has been dedicated to being... A doctor and um, and I guess we were quite concerned particularly my mother who um, just kept on asking my brother and I mostly me um, well, what am I going to do with your father when he's at home and um, because my brother lives overseas in New York and is no you're not coming back anytime soon um, I started to think uh, if I don't help my parents figure out what would be the next step for my father and how is he going to keep himself occupied? Um, I'm going to hear a lot from my mum. And uh, so, um, so I guess it was kind of from there that I realised that um, there actually um, isn't really a kind of a stepping stone or kind of guidance around what happens when you reach the end of your career. What can you do to still feel connected and have a sense of identity and purpose. Um, Cause I guess um, my father really enjoys the work that he does and he, he still teaches. And, um, and I guess it was from there, I applied my product management skills and really tried to understand from people ha who had made that transition from full-time paid work into that next chapter to figure out, well, how did they do it and what did they go through in order to achieve a meaningful life after full-time paid work? And then the more I interviewed people at various different stages and various degrees of success, it was then that I kind of, it started to dawn on me, there were certain patterns that those who had actually set themselves up really well and really understood what was important to them, like the type of projects they did on a day-to-day -day basis and what did their day-to-day -day lifestyle look like and those who were most intentional right from the time they were in their 40s and 50s if not earlier 
that approach of making a transition of kind of ramping up certain activities and dialing down some of the paid work set themselves up really well. So it just meant that it wasn't this jarring jump from one type of lifestyle to this totally new life. Um, Cause it doesn't really work that well that uh, when you do kind of go from one extreme to another. Um, so I guess it was from there. I then, um, took me down the road of traveling to various different communities around the world where they're known to be leading long, healthy, happy lives. And I guess in those communities, I realized that the elders had a lot of wisdom and they were really well respected and very much integrated with their communities. And also, I guess I was looking at all the scientific research around longevity, healthy aging, and the new definition of retirement. And um, I guess the more I learnt about where we're going with society and how the old definition of retirement, of stopping full-time work suddenly um, just because of a certain age or how much money you had um, in your super, though that's part of the story, but a big part of when you feel ready is actually um, when you've been trialing various different things, hence uh, my earlier point about being playful and experimental. And um, the more people kind of realize that it's okay that you go down one path and if, if it's not quite what you thought it was, that you can readjust your plans and try different things and um, different activities in your day to day and how you want to lead a meaningful life. Mm. Um, so I guess that's a long way of explaining kind of how I realized there was a gap in the market mm. that um, there's so much opportunity for people to start doing it early and not be afraid to trial different things. Yeah. Thank you, Natalie. Um, I certainly know that uh, from experience, people need to feel comfortable and feel safe and, and, and there is a lot more than just the money, but the money's got to last. So they've got to feel comfortable and safe about that as well. Um, so everybody, I hope that you've learned some things from today. I hope there's been some investment notions, um, some, some uh, cash flow tips, particularly Centrelink and the healthcare card. I hope that there's been some explanation on, on what's happened over the last little bit with regards to markets. And I just, uh, uh, just want to say again that having a chat with your financial planner, whoever that is, uh, is a really good thing to do and, and, and not just expose what, you, uh, what your situation is, but also how you feel. So everybody have a wonderful day and I, I do hope this uh, coronavirus finishes soon. Um, see you all. Bye-bye.